Could southern Mindanao be trembling with the warning of something more powerful to come? In early 2026, a magnitude 6.4 quake rattled the Davao region just three months after a far larger magnitude 7.4 event. Skeptics and scientists alike are left asking, is Mother Earth merely settling down after the big October shock? Or are these smaller tremors telling us that even greater pressure still lingers underground? Only a detailed look at the tectonic forces at play can begin to answer that. The recent twister struck on January 7, 2026, near Bakulin in Surigao del Sur, a rural village in Davao Oriental. The U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, reported it as magnitude 6.7, 10 km depth, while the Philippine Seismology Bureau, B-E-I-V-O-L-C-S, measured it as 6.4, 23 km depth. Whatever the precise number, it was a very strong shock, the strongest aftershock recorded since October's twin quakes. Importantly, the epicenter was located mere kilometres from the site of that earlier tremor. Fivolx noted the January epicenter lay less than 10 kilometres from where the magnitude 7.4 and its companion magnitude 6.8 hit in October. In other words, the area had already been stressed to its limit just weeks before. That October sequence was extraordinary. On October 10, 2025, two large quakes struck eastern Mindanao almost in succession. Together they formed a so-called doublet earthquake, the first registering 7.4, the second 6.7 .7 to 6.8. Both shocks were centred offshore near Davao Oriental Province and each generated tsunami warnings along the coast. Geologists quickly linked the first event to a rupture on the Philippine Trench, a deep ocean trench marking where the Philippine Sea Plate dives beneath the Philippines. In fact, FIVOLC's director Teresito Bacolcol explained that the Philippine Sea Plate is pushing against the Philippine Trench beneath the archipelago, and our sea floor bends and dives under the Philippine archipelago. In simple terms, the rigid oceanic plate is colliding head-on with the Philippine archipelago and being forced downward. When friction between the plates finally gives way, the seafloor slides down sharply, releasing massive energy as an earthquake. This push-and-slide mechanism, common at subduction zones, is exactly what triggered the Mindanao quakes. Subduction zones like the Philippine Trench are notorious in geology textbooks. The trench itself is an enormous elongated canyon on the seafloor stretching along eastern Mindanao. It ranks among the deepest trenches worldwide. Geologists describe it as a locked fault plain. Over years, the overlying plate and bending seafloor can become stuck due to friction, while the subducting plate steadily forces them into greater and greater stress. When the built-up stress finally overcomes friction, the plates jerk past each other, causing a quake. For Mindanao's October events, the USGS determined that the first quake involved oblique reverse faulting on the trench plane. In plain terms, one side of the trench suddenly lifted relative to the other with a bit of sideways motion. Models of the rupture suggest this 7.4 quake broke a roughly 90 by 55 kilometer patch of the fault, with some patches slipping by over 4.5 meters, about 15 feet. All of this happened in roughly half a minute of frantic energy release. The second quake of that doublet was also due to subduction. Fivols explicitly linked both shocks to motion on the Philippine Trench. By contrast, the January 6.4 Tembler likely represents an aftershock or triggered event in the same complex. In terms of plate physics, once the trench slipped in October, the pattern of stresses in the plate boundary shifted 
and nearby locked patches or adjacent faults may have been weakened. Whether the January quake was on the same sloping fault patch or a nearby splay is still under study. But given its proximity and timing, researchers are treating it as part of the October rupture sequence. In this region of the world, such seismic action is not surprising. The Philippines sits squarely on the Pacific Ring of Fire, a horseshoe of volcanoes and trenches around the Pacific Ocean where plates collide and dive under one another. In fact, the Philippine archipelago is one of the most complex tectonic settings on Earth. Two of its sides are bounded by active subduction zones. To the east, the Philippine Sea Plate plunges under the islands along the Philippine Trench, and to the west, the Eurasian Sunda plate goes under along trenches like the Manila, Negros, and Cotabato. Overlaying that, a massive inland strike-slip fault, the Philippine Fault, cuts the length of the country, absorbing some of the plate motions. USGS scientists note this opposite-facing subduction framework is unusual. In effect, the islands are squeezed by one converging margin to the east and another to the west, all the while being divided by a long lateral fault. No wonder the Philippines are racked by frequent earthquakes and volcanoes. Even with all this stress, huge quakes remain relatively rare on the Philippine Trench north of Mindanao. The eastern Philippine sea plate often creeps or experiences small quakes instead of rupturing in single immense events. When it does break, though, the consequences can be enormous. Mindanao has seen quakes of magnitude 8 or above in the past. A century ago, on April 14, 1924, a catastrophic tremor struck southeast Mindanao near the town of Mati. That quake, known as the 1924 Mati earthquake, registered around 8.1 on one scale, often reported as 8.3. It devastated the region and left hundreds dead. Decades later, on December 2nd, 1972, another massive tembler around magnitude 8.0 hit off Davao. That event again underscored the raw power stored in this subduction zone. Geologists still study those historic ruptures to understand how far they propagated along the trench and how much stress they relieved. Each such mega-quake serves as a warning of what the future might hold if and when locked plate segments fail. But it is critical to emphasize that in earthquake science, labels like foreshock and aftershock only make sense in hindsight. USGS experts caution that a quake can only be called a foreshock after a larger quake has occurred in the same area. Until then, it is just an earthquake. Thus, the January 6.4 event could only be deemed a foreshock if an even bigger quake follows it. At present, there is no way to know that. For now, seismologists treat it as an aftershock or triggered slip in the wake of the October rupture. What do the mechanics of these quakes tell us about future risk? Unfortunately, nature offers no easy answer. The Earth's crust doesn't send explicit warnings before the very largest temblers. All we can do is examine how stress redistribution works. The October fault break released a great deal of energy, and aftershocks are a normal part of the readjustment process. Over time, the aftershocks will typically decay in frequency and size following known statistical patterns. The 6.4 hit fits into that pattern in size, occurring about 90 days later and relatively close to the main shock area. It likely represents a minor slip on an adjacent portion of the fault or a connecting structure as the crust around the broken zone settles. It is still true, however, that an eightish earthquake in this region is among the worst that can happen. The October event, though destructive, was well below that threshold.
Geologists note that segments of the Philippine Trench and adjoining faults have rarely broken in one giant rupture during the observational era, but the potential is there. Stress that didn't go away in October could, under certain conditions, trigger another major quake in the future. It's just that nobody can predict when or where with any precision. Like all subduction zones, the rupture processes here are complex and governed by factors such as fault geometry, frictional properties, and even fluid pressures in the crust. One cautionary perspective is to remember that some of the strongest historical quakes in the region have not been easily foreshadowed by a long string of precursors. In both 1924 and 1972, the build-up to the magnitude 8 events was not obvious in the seismic record at the time. The Earth sometimes seems to lock and then suddenly slip. Five Volks officials have often warned that trench quakes are unpredictable. As one researcher put it, movement along these trenches is unpredictable. In other words, unlike aftershocks which follow a larger quake, foreshocks cannot reliably signal a storm to come. At present, the scientific expectation is that the series of quakes centered on Davao will gradually subside. The Philippine sea plate continues to push northwest, loading the trench at a rate of a few centimeters per year. Eventually, the cycle of build-up and release will repeat, perhaps filling the seismic gap with more quakes. For now, however, the consensus is that there is no clear geologic evidence the January tremor heralds an impending massive rupture. Seismometers will remain on high alert, but geophysicists must simply wait and watch. Even without human eyewitnesses, the rocks themselves record clues. By studying aftershock patterns, crustal deformation, and subtle geodetic shifts, scientists piece together where stress is highest. The rich geologic context means the region can accommodate strain through many mechanisms from megathrust slips to smaller normal or strike-slip jolts on subsidiary faults. Each aftershock helps map the zone of shifted stress. Over time, that information will tell researchers whether the fault has relieved most of its pent-up energy or if patches remain dangerously locked. In the end, only thorough geophysical monitoring and scientific analysis can unravel the secrets beneath southern Mindanao. By examining past earthquakes and the clues left in rock and satellite data, scientists attempt to illuminate the dark processes on Earth's fault lines. While the immediate concern of people is safety, the geologic story is one of plates relentless in motion carrying energies that sometimes must be released in violent jolts. The magnitude 6.4 and magnitude 7.4 events are chapters in this unfolding saga of the planet's restless edge. Whether the next chapter brings another tremor or a return to quietude, only time and tectonics will tell. If this deep dive into the tectonic forces shaping the Philippines helped you understand how powerful earthquakes really work beneath our feet, please like this video, share it with others who care about science and earth processes, subscribe for more evidence-based geology content, and tap the hype icon to help this information reach a wider audience.